Hello everybody, this is HG Shaves here. I'm back with another video. Hope this video uh, finds you well. Today I'm going to be reviewing two uh, pieces of hardware, a razor in the Blackland Vector and a brush in the Thater uh, Premium Bore. So let me talk to you about the brush first. So uh, Thater is a longtime uh, German brush manufacturer. Um, they're known for you know, really high-end, uh, luxurious badger knots in various handles. And back in about 2017, they made a deal with Bulgu Shaving that they were going to make these uh, premium bore knots and sell them in a, in a wide variety of handles. And um, I have always thought that this was a really great looking brush and I'm thankful to my friend who agreed to send this my way for me to try out. And however, I have to share a little bit of um, history with you uh, about this brush. It is a little bit infamous in that it uh, this particular line of bore knots for Thater had a really uh, bad history with just quality control issues. And so if you'd like, I'm going to link down below the 29 page uh, Badger and Blade thread where various users talk about their issues with this brush. And if you click on it, make sure you click on the spoiler in the first, uh, in the original post, um, because that really tells the story for the whole thing. So they've had some issues. I'm not going to spoil what the issues have been, but looking at this brush, um, you can see a little bit of the knot through the handle, which doesn't bother me. Um, the coin looks good on the bottom. However, because of the issue, some of the issues even having, um, you're not going to be able to quite see it here on camera, but I can see the glue coming out of the well handle and it's on the very bottom part of the knot <laughs> so i don't know if that's a bad thing but again given the history with this brush that does worry me a little bit um certainly my friend's brush doesn't seem to have any issues and uh, i wanted to also say that this is the softest bore i've ever used so i also do want to give them props in this knot and that it is beautiful. Um, you can see that it's, you know, really soft. Um, even, you know, I haven't wet this through at all yet, and the bristles are not nearly as stiff as, you know, my Zenith B2 here on the left. Like these are much more like traditional bore bristles where they're, you know, they would snap in half even if you didn't wet them through properly. So this bore does have a lot going for it. Um, however, it is a little bit concerning about the, uh, again, kind of infamous history of this brush. And so, um, anyway, I'll talk to you more about the brush as we go. I'm going to put this in some uh, water to um, soak now while we talk. And um, now I'll talk to you about the Blackland Vector. So this is also a loan uh, to me from a good friend. So thank you for that. And I've been wanting to try this razor for a while. No particular reason. Um, and it's, it's funny, other people have been trying to um, send this razor to me to try out, which is very nice of them. I don't know, I, I, I think they must think that because I like the gems so much that, you know, I should try out an Artist Club um, style razor. But again, just to uh, let you know about Blackland, in case you haven't heard of them, um, they're a razor maker uh, right here in the US. Everything is machined, um, designed, all that stuff right here in some various states, but nonetheless, it's all done here. Um, I had reviewed the Blackland Blackbird uh, not too long ago, and while that was really one of the most beautiful modern safety razors I've ever seen, uh, it was just a little bit too aggressive. Uh, I, and actually, it was more than a little bit too aggressive. That was like much more aggressive than I would personally like for daily shaving. But if you were somebody who shaved, you know, every few days, that razor I think would be a good choice for you. Um, so this is an Artist Club uh, three-piece razor, and um, Something that's interesting is how the thread is on this uh, head. So it comes straight out the back and um, you have to be careful when you're um, screwing the handle in that you don't uh, mess up the threading. And um, yeah, I this has been a interesting week with this razor. I'll um, talk about it more once I actually get it to the shave. Um, and so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to let this um, bore soak for just a couple more minutes and then I will uh, bring you back in when I'm about to start the lathering process. All right, so I've got some uh, warm water on my face and part of the issue with this brush, um, for me personally, 
I don't know if other people have this issue, but it I couldn't get it to dial in with two different soap bases that I started off using beginning of the week. It just, it, the brush just wasn't working for me. And so finally for a third attempt, I decided, well, let's just settle and let's use uh, palm olive shave cream, which I've never reviewed on this channel, but um, I've used this um, a fair amount kind of off camera. And it's just a very simple, easy to use commercial cream. And that's why I pulled it out because I was having such an issue in dialing in the brush, if you will. So I decided, well, let's just use something commercial here. So it also kind of adds to the European vibe, which um, I'll show you in the aftershave uh, a bit later as well. So what I've been doing, taking three amounts like this um, and just putting it on the face like that, I found that this has been uh, plenty of soap. Um, here, I found that I always need to add more soap, not less, G generally speaking, with any um, uh, soap that I try out or cream, whatever. So uh, we've got the brush. I'm going to shake out most of the water. And um, so once it's been wet through, it really opens up. And um, again, this, I, I would say this is a more of a typical bore knot and that it ends up looking like this, uh, whereas my zenith is a bit more uh, kind of dense and scrubby. So let's uh, get into the face lather here. If, if you don't like uh, really working your brush like this, which some people tell me that I don't because I like to do a lot of uh, painting as I'm building lather. But if you don't like working your brush like this, <laughs> then a commercial shave cream might not be for you. Um, you know, with any shave cream or soap that you kind of apply directly to the face like this, you know, you can really use a good, you can really agitate it. So now it's obviously time for some water. Actually, let's try a little bit of painting now. Again, I'm not really sure what was going on um, with those previous two bases that I tried to use with this brush earlier in the week. Um, we lost a hair, that's okay. There we go. Um, again, there were two bases that I had used before and knew that worked well, you know, soaps that I had, that I had reviewed on this channel. And, um, I don't know what it was. I just could not seem to get enough soap loaded onto the brush or something because, um, my first pass lather would always be kind of skimpy and then by the second pass it, it again to me it felt more like the brush was somehow eating up all the lather by the second pass but then since I've switched to the palm olive um, it seemed to have uh, hold on to the lather um, much better in between passes Again, as you saw when the knot was dry, um, this brush is pretty well broken in and my friend told me that it doesn't even have that many uses on it really. Um, like uh, it's a similar amount to my Zenith V2, maybe 40, 50 uses. My only complaint about this handle is that you sometimes get shoved up into this middle whatever you call it here and that's kind of not comfortable so I've been adopting more of a let's hold the whole thing <laughs> uh, sort of philosophy so I probably could have gone with two of those amounts of um, shave cream at the beginning would have saved me some time here of having to, having to add in water but again um, I just didn't want to 
chance not getting enough um, soap into the brush to start. So I'm gonna keep uh, lathering this up and then bring you back in when it's uh, ready to go. All right, we're back. And, um, you know, I've, I've kind of gotten accustomed. I've gotten, I've started to like how if you're a face lather, your first pass is kind of significantly um, thicker in terms of your lather than the subsequent passes because of how much soap you have to use to kind of get it going. And, you know, so, some people don't like that, but I think I do. It's just kind of a natural progression um, to a, you know, multi-pass shave. Anyway, uh, so here we go with the Blackland Vector. Um, haven't talked much about it. So the first thing, which may be obvious to you or maybe not, um, is the cutting edge is um, longer uh, significantly than uh, DE or even the gem, I think. Um, so that's something that I've kind of gotten used to this week. Um, so it's really nice about how much uh, real estate you can cover with this razor. And I imagine for people who, I don't know, wear a goatee, um, like if you were just sh shaving the sides of your goatee, you could be, you know, you could be so efficient how many um, strokes you use with the razor to get that done. Um, this razor is definitely more efficient than comfortable. That's a comparison that um, Michael Friedberg likes to make when he's talking about razors. Um, and so of course you have to Use a light touch, and um, he would also say that you need a good lather. You need an especially good lather with a razor like this, and I would probably agree with that, which is maybe why I had so many problems at the beginning of the week, because I wasn't getting a great lather. Um, so going under the nose with this razor is the best part. Because the razor head's so thin, you know, it makes for very easy to get really bright up under there. Um, if you're a guy that has a mustache, maybe, and you trim just the top part, this would be like a great razor for that. The razor, um, not the razor, the angle of this razor was not the most intuitive thing to find. The first couple days. Like the ideal. Angle, but I will say that it Definitely let you know when you're not using the right angle. Um, it's, it's weird because it's not a ton of bit blade feel. I mean, it is some, um, but it's not one of those where like it's so blade forward that you can automatically tell. I think sometimes it is a little bit unclear um, about the angle, especially on those first couple days of using it. Okay, that was the first pass. Uh, we're gonna do three passes today. I'm clearing off two days of growth, forgot to mention that, um, but let me rinse and then I'll bring you back in in just a second. So since the first pass, uh, we've got shave cream lather going everywhere. Um, it isn't really enough to, well, I can move a little bit. <laughs> that felt kind of silly. 
Um, anyway, here we go, second pass. Oh man, that's... Well, yeah, the, the softness of this brush can just not be overstated. Um, like when I'm painting like this, or when I spray the brush like this, I feel almost like no um, bristle, like no friction. I mean, it's kind of incredible. All right, let's go across the grain. We're gonna do three passes, so. We'll do mostly across and with the grain on this pass. Okay, second pass done. Very nice, no issues. Um, I had a couple little spots here from earlier in the week, but we're gonna try to avoid opening those up. Um, gonna do another rinse and then uh, final pass three coming up. Okay, third pass against the grain mostly. Um, I think I've only tried three passes with this razor maybe once this week. Um, because one of the benefits of using a modern razor instead of a vintage, not always, but generally is that there are some very efficient modern razors and this is definitely one of them. And so I say this because there was no need to do uh, three passes when I was shaving every day this week. But, you know, because it's the video and because I'm actually took a day off, so shaving off two days of growth. Uh, let's do three, right? Um, Wanted to mention too, about the design of the razor. Um, whoever writes their item descriptions, maybe it's Shane, maybe it's somebody else. Um, they mentioned a good point in that um, because the, the artist club blades are longer, that traditionally has led people to um, create really big heads to compensate. And so they did the opposite of let's make it, you know, as thin as we can and we'll, you know, uh, put the thread in the middle to help with that, to help the stability. Which again, for me, not a huge deal. You know, I like using gems, which have some of the most ridiculous uh, head sizes. Um, so, you know, it's just like a nice thing. Another razor I'm really looking forward to trying um, from Blackland is, of course, the Sabre, which takes a gem blade. Um, I don't know how big the head is on that. I mean, it looks reasonable. <laughs> Doesn't look like a vintage, la you know, lather catcher with the crazy getup. You know, so 
basically everywhere out on my face this week has, it has been super closely cut. I mean, you can definitely notice the difference in the efficiency between this razor and the usual, you know, vintages or mild modern razors that I like to use. The only spot I've had issues with has been behind my jaw here, which I don't think is a surprising trouble spot in the grand scheme of the world, but for me it is a little surprising. But no doubt, it's definitely just something with my technique, right? Like I've only, this is only my first time using an Artist Club razor, so. Of course my technique's not gonna be, uh, you know, perfect. And as usual, <laughs> with my uh, week of shaves and my review at the end, usually the review video shaved the best. Um, I, pe people sometimes ask me about that, like, um, you know, how good are your shaves when you're taping versus when you're just on your own? And I don't know, for some reason for me, they're usually better. It probably partially has to do with the fact that this is my, you know, sixth, sixth day now using the setup. And so of course I've gotten more accustomed to it and I know kind of what to expect. But I think there is also something to the fact that because I'm talking um, with you all, I, I don't overthink the shave. I just kind of have to go and I talk and try and keep up. Um, because for, for some of us, I know not for all of us, but for me, I tend to be an overthinker. And so perhaps I just think too much when I'm on my own. Um, so the immediate kind of post-shave feel of this um, palm olive is definitely a little drying. Um, which isn't surprising, but guess what? You can use a lotion, you can use a balm, which I'm going to talk to you about. So I'm going to uh, do a final rinse and then come back and talk to you over post-shave. Okay, just did my usual cold water rinse. And let me tell you, that water is cold. It's like, I don't know, 10 degrees Fahrenheit outside. And um, the, the, the water is cold and it's always very soothing for me. Um, for post-shave today, we're going to be using my favorite um, aftershave product of uh, 2020. The Spartium Natural Cosmetics Meshtar Aftershave Lotion. Um, this is uh, from Croatia, and um, I've had a good time talking with a few uh, Croats. I believe that's how you say it. You spell it C R O A T. I actually don't know how you pronounce it, but that's how you refer to the people. Um, I just use one pump. That's plenty. And so this is a dark, not a dark. Yeah, it's kind of a dark aquatic scent. Um, as I mentioned in my unboxing video that I did, the video prior to this one, if you didn't see that, you can go check it out. Um, this company does have plans to come to the U.S. in the nearish uh, fu uh, future. And with that, they will bring some new scents from what I hear because before they just had the one cent for the soap and the one cent for this uh, balm. But again, uh, sorry, lotion. But again, I really love the dark aquatic thing. And honestly, the scent was a big reason why I um, picked this as my favorite uh, aftershave product of 2020. So that's that. Yeah, you know, it's a thin lotion, not as thick as like a balm or something, but it does the job for me. And the scent doesn't last too long, so I can put on that fragrance in a bit. All right, so that was our shave. Um, came together really nicely. Again, the Palm Olive Shave Cream, they tried to make you think that this was discontinued a couple years ago. It's not. Uh, it might be more difficult to get in the UK itself, but um, a, a family member went over to Germany in 2019 and he bought this for me from a you know common grocery store for like a euro or two. So it's still out there. The Theater Boer. Man, um, such an infamous brush, and I must say, as a shave nerd, shave reviewer, it is cool to use a brush like this that has caused so much grief uh, for some people, really. But this brush is stunning, you know? If I were offered the same brush, like, if somebody wanted to sell me theirs, I don't know, I'd have to think about it. I'm generally speaking in a one brush, sorry, in a one bore brush rule at the moment, and that I really like my V2 Zenith, and I want to break that in fully and then kind of see, but... This, this thing is really stellar. Um, so anyway, the Theater Premium Bore, which, um, again, they don't make it any longer. I don't, I don't know if I mentioned that, but because of all the issues, you, they don't make it anymore. Shocker, right? 
Um, finally, the razor, the Blackland Vector. Um, beautiful razor. Again, um, I would say I maybe like the look of the Blackbird more. Just something about the Artist Club thing. I'm not totally, I haven't totally jived with yet because well, this is my first experience. But um, beautiful razor. I'm not going to go get one anytime soon. I don't, it's, it doesn't serve me um, what I need for, you know, kind of a daily driver. But for you, it might be the perfect razor. Again, you need to get under the nose. You need to throw up a beard or something. This, this might be really good. So um, that's the vector. All right. Well, that'll do it for today's shave. Thank you as always if you made it this far. And um, coming up next week, I really have no idea. I'm going to use the weekend to use kind of some random stuff work through some samples maybe, and then we'll get back on the ball uh, Sunday or Monday. So um, anyway, I uh, hope you all are staying well, all that stuff. If you have any comments or questions, you can always leave them below or send me an email, message me on Instagram, whatever suits you. But for now, this has been uh, HG Shaves. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.